Hey everybody, I'm Ifan Williams with Back to Earth Creations and today I'm making a little something for myself. This is a three drawer, like apothecary or jewelry box, cabinet, chest, I don't know what to call it, but it's a smaller version of what I have linked down in the video description below, which is what I am building up to. I think I got this one from like Michael's or Joanne's like a million years ago, it feels like, but I did also get some replacement handles that I thought were super cute, but I have a problem in that the little tacks that came with it are like way too deep for the wood I'm using. So I can either hammer them through and you know stab myself every time I'm rummaging through here um, further into the future or I can figure something else out. So we'll figure that out. But the reason why I wanted different handles is I'm gonna have to remove these ones anyways. Like you can see how not placed the same they are. Um, so that'll be something that we deal with as we get there. But I went through and I drew up some plans. And I've already started sculpting some little mushroom caps and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but the plan that I have drawn up. Because I'm making this for me. It's been a long time since I made something just for me to, to have. And I'm redoing my um, vanity. Where I put like my, I call them my potions. But it's basically my morning and night creams uh, on my face. And like my smell good stuff and my lotions. But uh, I've got that going on over there in my bedroom. And I wanted to make it nice instead of, it's a little bit of a, well, a cluster. Well, you know. Um, and I have a whole bunch of these broken cabs that when Randy and I order from, uh, gem, like lapidary, sorry, that was the word I was trying to remember was lapidary, um, we'll buy in bulk a lot of the time. And sometimes we'll get cabs that, you know, are kind of underwhelming. Sometimes we'll get cabs that are broken, but we curate them and then pass them on the, the good ones on to... Uh, other folks through our craft along kits and stuff like that so um, but I save all of the broken ones for me to work with uh, and I by some miracle they don't all have the same flash but they are roughly about the same size um, I have two big labradorite teardrops this one the tip broke off but it's still a beautiful flash and I want to set that one back off to the side and then I have this one here that yesterday I actually super glued this front chip back on so there's that but then I'll need to glue this back together I was just testing to see if the super glue would even work now this is something I would not use broken jewelry like this um, I don't know we'll have to see how it holds up but for the most part I wouldn't use this to for something wearable like like a piece of jewelry that would be getting maybe swinging around on the end of a chain and like clunking into stuff while I'm moving around or um, but I think for a home decor piece I think this will be just fine so we have this one here and then these two are almost the same size this one had a little bit broken off on the tip so, I mean, it's not super visible, but gosh, look at the beautiful flash in that. So there's, each of these will be kind of down here. And then this is the other one. Again, super beautiful flash. And then I have, so this is kind of the side layout and I'm going to be building layers of, <clears throat> of polymer clay up from the base of the box because this wooden box will bake okay in my oven especially at the low temperatures required for polymer clay but I'm gonna be doing like a twist around it and a hammered layer and I've got these little where'd they go these little labradorite chips that are undrilled that I'm gonna be setting into the polymer clay as well kind of at the corners so I wanted to kind of just plan it out I'm gonna be doing a whole lot of um, handmade fake moss like both out of polymer clay as well out as um, this stuff this is blended turf 
for dioramas that I've mixed in with some craft glue and it dries down pretty durable and I really love the way that it looks. So I've got a couple of bags of that. Links to everything um, should be down in the video description, um, which if you just scroll down, even if you're on a phone, you can like click, there's like a little drop down arrow that will show you all of that info. It's above where you would like leave a comment, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'll need to double check that because I feel like they're constantly changing that stuff on me. Um, but we've got We'll have links to all the tools and materials that I'm using. I'll introduce the tools and materials to you guys as I stumble into them because I'm not entirely certain what all I'm going to be using yet. So we do have for the fronts of the drawers, I've got the replacement handles. It's going to be some moss. I'm going to make some like little fake stones to make it like a little stone border. Um, and I'm going to, that's kind of how I'm going to be decorating the front. We are going to be making a polymer a polymer clay leaf cane in this video at some point as well too and then let me get the, the banana let me get the camera repositioned a little bit so I can show you guys kind of what I have going on in my mind for on the top of this okay so for on the top I would like to put a candle cup and if you'll visualize with me I'm gonna have this kind of in front of the candle cup. So I'm gonna have this amethyst set in a way that um, the light will transfer through it from, I'm gonna be putting like a little LED candle in there cause my home is made out of old dry wood and I am flammable and made of meat. So I don't do a whole lot of stuff with open flame unless I'm going to be like sitting there watching it the whole time. Um, so I do have that option, but whether it's an LED candle or a live flame, I think it'll be pretty cool. And I'm making this to be able to tolerate live flame. Um, so yeah, I'll have these smoky quartz crystals kind of positioned around that, kind of radiating up and out with the amethyst with the glow cutting through it, which again, this was another damaged cab that had that like chip out of it. I don't know if I wanna have it like that. I like that. We'll figure that out as we go. But then I also want like little mushrooms popping up out of it and like little stones and stuff. So it's going to be a whole little mess of a thing up top. But I thought that would be pretty neat. And then I'm just going to have an unfinished backside. Um, I may lay some clay in it and do like some wood texturing and stuff. But for the most part, this is going to be the planer of all of the sides. But then I also am going to be adding, you can see I'm testing out some little magnets here. I'm going to be setting the magnets into the bottom of the wood. Like you can see where I have, I'm going to go ahead and take the drawers out. So I, I don't want to lose those tacks even though I end up, might end up not using them. Um, so I've actually drawn out on here. I am going to be epoxying down the magnets. And then making it so that like we can just set the can, the Altoids in there and then we could like pull it off, you know, and leave the magnets embedded in whatever it's embedded in. I actually actually do a resin pour on the bottom of this, so it'd be pretty cool and a pretty efficient way of holding the magnets in. But I don't know if y'all know this, you can put your Altoids in here. But I just thought it'd be like a cool little like secret, keep it secret, keep it safe. Because, <laughs> I don't know, folks say out of sight, out of mind, but if I know that I've hidden something somewhere, it, it'll be like, like every time I look over at this, I'll be like, ooh, there's something hid under there. <laughs> and it's a great way for like, whenever I put treasured things, I like to hide them, because then, uh, in special hidey places, because then every time I look over there, it... I think of it, whereas if it's something just sitting out on the shelf, I'll get used to it and my eyes will just pass right over it and sometimes, you know, it's the curse of being a magpie that has stuff just everywhere that it can get a little overwhelming. So whenever I keep something hidden and secret, it's like so much fun. So I love little Heidi hole stuff like that. And I may actually do something Heidi here on the back as well. I don't know. 
I don't know if we can manage that. You know, we probably could, because if we set, if I had another piece of wood and we set some magnets here, and then it maybe had magnets set on the other side of the wood. I wonder if that would, here, I've got some, what is this? This is some basswood, very flexible. Um, but I want to see if test the theory a little bit. Okay, so I wonder if I'd be able to. I mean, they stick to each other through the wood, that's for certain. But I wonder, I don't know. It's something to consider because I may, on the back side of this basswood, if I had a piece that were large enough, I'd do all the polymer clay and stuff and have the magnet set in there. And then that way you can, we could like lift the back out and it would be like a secret. Or we could hinge it, but I think if there were hinges on the outside, it would be a little sus. It'd be, it'd be, it'd give it away a little bit more, I think. I want to keep it secret, keep it safe. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about that idea. And I've got, I think, a little bit more, yeah, I got a little bit more of that basswood laying about. I think I got that from Joann's in their model making department. Okay. Alrighty, y'all. So... I have the first wave <clears throat> of this project in the oven for about 15 minutes just because I want to get everything nice and set up and that's on the bare wood and everything. Now I think I have decided I don't want to proceed the way that I had been. So I've just cut off some thin layers of the Primo Sculpey in black is what I'm doing right now. But um, I don't want to have to bake the pieces on to the wood. I'm going to make the pieces and then bake them and then apply them to the wood. So I'm going to just pass this through my pasta machine. I'm on the thickest setting. Just adding new clay slowly and getting it well incorporated. as we go. I'm trying to not catch any air bubbles if I can help it, but if I get any, I just pop them. It's not the end of the world. And so I'm going to finish conditioning all of this clay and then um, we will start making our pieces. So I decided to go ahead and make this a long video because we might come across something that we haven't talked about. We might stumble across something that we've never thought of before. And I'd hate to have missed out on that just out of the effort of appeasing the YouTube algorithm. Y'all can always skip ahead in my videos if you're, I mean, you clicked on my face, you watch at your leisure, <laughs> but, um, my heart is always with the beginners. I don't want to, and it becomes, it does become difficult the more I do this to not take little things that I'm doing almost like unconsciously. You know, I'm not directly paying attention to what it is that I'm doing. Um, but I am trying my best to explain the how and the why and just the motivations and reasons behind, you know, why am I doing the bezel like this first? You know, it's to, in an effort to hopefully get a really nice grip on this stone and so if you guys have any questions about something that I'm doing or ideas that you're like hey what if this would work oh my gosh all right that glue is time to go <laughs> I know some people love that Randy used to cover his hands in glue when he was a kid and uh just peel it off all creepy like it's amazing <laughs> but um there we go 
because I just keep leaving glue spots in the clay. Okay, like that one there. So clean hands definitely help get all the glue off of them, but juggling a couple of projects at the moment, and quite frankly, I'm a little swamp gremlin, so here we are. But I have... There's our bezel. Very cool. Next step is to place this down and cut around it. Am I even in frame? No. There we go. I'm really hoping I'm not sticking my giant noggin in front of the camera again. So just going around the edge, we just want enough that we can set that twisted bit. On. Like just a little bit of a perch for it. They're lifting that up. Now I think even before doing the twisty bit on this one, I am going to cut the next segment. So laying this out again. Great big this time though. Again, trying to remove any crud and fur as we go. Excellent. Because again, we can always add more dots. I just wanted to be able to establish the hammered, like, stipled effect before applying the other layers on top of it. Um, just because I think it makes it look more more cohesive. Okay, so I'm about to run that back through the, um, how did this, what even is this? What's this? Did I use this on, oh Vaughn, why would you have done this? I think I used one of my cutters on some epoxy sculpt. It's really a bad idea to mix products on tools, but I didn't have multiples of the same tool, so... And again, more of that swamp gremlin problem rising up. Oh, that's such a pretty lab! Ah! <laughs> like, how? Okay. So I'm going to pass this through the pasta machine. Just feeding it in long ways. Because that should get us where we're going. And from here, while we may not have a tissue blade long enough, we can still try to figure it out. And little snips in our clay like that. I'm actually going to go through and freehand cut with my uh, craft knife. There we go. And if you try that and it doesn't work out the way that you want, just smush it up and do it again. <laughs> like polymer clay is really amazing. At its versatility and how much you can use it and then have something go wrong and try something else and okay pinching off just a little bit on the end there so I'm going to bring this up and around and I'm going to place it 
It's difficult for me sometimes to maintain a consistent twist. So you may not have problems with it, but I certainly do. And if you're having trouble, just be patient with yourself and with the project. You'll get it. Oh yeah, I made way more than what I needed. That'll work. Just snipping off that tip, tossing the rest into the pile. There we go. And now I am going to keep stipling. To round out that edge. I get nervous when I have multiple projects on the same work surface because this one I got like I'm very happy with where it's at. This one, while I'm working on it, I'm worried about, you know, messing up the first one I had done. So, these tiles are inexpensive enough. I don't know why I don't have more of them. Uh, but, sometimes just something as simple as being able to, you know, have one little tile per tray, or per project, or per piece, can really, really make a big difference. Okay, so I'm just... Cranking on through, getting it nice and conditioned for if we're fixing to do something similar. It's just right there and ready to go. Okay, so getting some powder on there, blotting first. That keeps me from over applying, and then just rubbing across the surface just like how we did on the other piece there we go that's what I like to see sometimes using a little bit more pigment can really help you get where you're going Let's see how the, well, okay, I, I'm conflicted because I'd like to be consistent in my application methods, but I'd also like to be experimenting. So you can kind of see how those are, well, opposing forces. <laughs> so, I mean, if I had a little makeup brush or something on hand, I would try using that just to see what kind of application I can get, especially since my hands are so grungy right now. Or I could just wash my hands, but we know that's not going to happen right now. I'm crafting. Also, I have to be careful of my long fingernail that I don't, uh, A, stab the project with it, or B, get a small, you know, ton of pigment there underneath the nail. Very cool. I like that a lot. I love this sunset gold color. Very cool. Then when it's all said and done, you can use a wet wipe to clean up or a bit of damp shot towel. Oops, sorry for the loud noises. That really helps. Very cool. Okay, so I'm going to pop this into the oven and then I'll meet you guys right back here for the next step. Okay, it has come to my attention. I am not going to have this project ready in time to be able to use this stuff up before it dries completely. So what I'm going to do here then is actually make some little um, clumps. I'm just cleaning out my cup. But we can take this and kind of smush together little clumpy bits that can then be utilized in different parts of our uh, of our project. So I'm actually instead of doing little clumps, 
I think I'm just going to do it in like little mats. I'm just going to do a little mat. Just like that. Set this out in the sun. Don't want to breeze or anything, but you can set it on a sunny windowsill. Um, or in a warm spot so that it uh, dries faster. And then we'll have some nice pieces, hopefully, that we can break apart and incorporate into the final design. Hey y'all, so I kind of want to try something. Okay. Well, that took a little bit more of the wood with it than I wanted it to. That one was a little bit more like how I thought it would be. I'm just going to set those off to the side. There we are. Okay, just popping those off because I'm going to be replacing them with these handles and I want to try I have just a flat bristle brush here and I have this Lumiere paint by Jacquard and the Halo, Halo Violet Gold as well as the Halo Blue Gold these are like my two favorite colors but I'm gonna come through and I just I'm not gonna open that one yet I'm gonna do the base in this purple it is like so dumb and thick. <laughs> but I am just laying down a very generous base layer. Like, super generous. And I kind of, yeah, I guess I'm gonna. I don't know, I've got some left on the brush, so I'll do it here, but I was going to paint everything else just black. Or stain it, possibly. Probably just painting it black, though, because I have, like, a ton of matte black paint that I think will be perfect for that. And in which case, I should probably <laughs> be painting the black first, but I just want to try a proof of concept, and I guess I should have just done it on one drawer first to, like, test it, or even, better yet, on, like, a piece of scrap wood. But here we are doing this thing and yeah I'm just no actually I am glad that I'm doing the front of the drawer first because now I can be messy and then we can go through possibly with it taped off and tidy it up with the black oh I like that because I love being messy I am like a pig in mud y'all like straight up I just if I can be wallowing in a crafty mess <laughs> I'm in heaven. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and do this one just because we could have used a bit of wood filler or something of the sort to um, patch that out, make it smooth, but I don't mind a little bit of character. I don't mind it a bit. I'm just painting along here. Now I do have a fan going, so this may be drying a little bit faster than what I want it to, but we will see how that goes. Because I was thinking about it, and it's I don't want to bulk up the fronts of these drawers too much with like clay and stuff. I'd like to keep it relatively smooth and sleek, but I'd really love to get a little bit of a neat, like um, maybe labradorescent effect or something of the sort going on. So now just rinsing my brush. There we go. And now I'm gonna come in with this blue-green halo. And I'm just gonna do like some Watch stuff. And then this is where I'm hoping it'll get really cool. I'm just using some water, but I'm gonna spritz this onto the surface. And then we can keep kind of touching it a bit. Oh, I like that. 
Then I'm going to rotate it around. Yes, we are going to keep doing this. I love it, y'all. It is actually kind of working, maybe. We'll see. I don't want to let my enthusiasm get ahead of me. But also, that's kind of just how I roll, <laughs> is uh, by sheer enthusiasm. Okay, so spritzing the water on, what this is accomplishing is separating the pigments like in the paint from the mica shimmery halo effect so you can kind of see especially here how it lifts that really vibrant blue out of the green it's, just, it's so cool i just and it comes out just a little different every time so i am always always like Ooh, what's gonna happen next <laughs> Yeah, I think it was perfectly fine that we did this first and then we'll go like after it's dried we'll go through and do the black so just gonna kind of tapping distributing with my oh my gosh it's pretty um, with my paintbrush And y'all, I'm even thinking about capping this like in some resin or something to keep it like really shiny. Though honestly, I think the Mod Podge will do a perfectly fine job of that. Ooh, oh, that's gonna be so neat. <laughs> and each one, I think, you know, again, is gonna be just a little different. So we could put a heat gun on it, but I don't wanna rush it. Like I'm gonna, instead of moving these around, I'm actually going to get the camera down so that I can show you guys what's up. This one especially, I'm loving that kind of speckling through here. And I wish the camera did as good of a job as what just straight eyeballs does, <laughs> but I'm really loving this. <sighs> and see, if we were able to put in a little bit more texture and stuff, then the blue would have been settling into all the different lines and things. So I'm going to set this off to the side and let it dry, and then we'll see what's up. Okay, so while the drawer fronts dry, I'm coming through with just some apple barrel paint, um, apple barrel acrylic paint, and I'm just going to start getting some color down. I'm probably going to end up having to do multiple coats, but I just want to get the base of all of this painted. I have not done anything special to the wood to prime it. I have not done anything special to the paint. I do like paint for on pieces like this because if I didn't assemble it, I don't know for certain, you know, how the glue was applied, if there's going to be spots where stain wouldn't take, and I don't feel like sanding the whole ding dong thing before, you know, having to get to work. Um, so oh, it's so fun to just paint these too. Like, I'm just going to say. We should totally do a resin pour on the back. Yep, that's what we're doing. Because why not? Because it's got that, like, inset. Mm. Yes. And it'll be a nice little trial. Because we've been thinking about making our own um, countertop for in the kitchen. I, I, like, I don't have enough counter space. I've got, like, about two, two to three square feet of uh, counter space that's, like, usable if I have, like, a crock pot or something out on the counter. So we thought, well, hey, maybe instead of using, like, a six-foot folding table, we could, like, get some of those pre-built cabinets because we don't have the capacity right now to make our own. Um, and then make our own countertop. And we were thinking about doing... Like, oh, here's an example. Uh, this style of cabochon, the way we do that, like, paint pour, we were thinking about doing that, very similarly to how we did the wood, actually, um, and then doming it in resin. Like, I just thought that would be so wicked cool. Um, so, testing it on this might be just the thing to do. And if not, it'll still probably be pretty. And if it's horrible, it's on the back. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay, 
Um, yeah, I am going to go ahead and paint the inside of this as well. Spray painting would probably be really easy, but I don't feel like dealing with the smell. That's something that I really like about acrylic, is I can just go. It's very indoor friendly. I don't have to wear uh, PPE or anything like that. I think that's a pers personal protection equipment. I mean, I always keep an exhaust fan going, but still. Um, getting that painted. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this. And I never know if I should just keep chit-chatting with y'all, or if I should throw it in the time lapse, or if I should just stop recording, get it done, and meet you back here. But I really do love hanging out and, like, uh, hanging out with you guys in the comments and stuff. And I know Future Vaughn is having a ball hanging out with y'all in the premiere. So, hey, everybody who's hanging out in the premiere, thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. <sighs> I hope... You're keeping it crafty and taking it easy and just having a really, really good day. Also, at the time of recording, I'm working on a year of yoga project over on my other channel, The Vonster Vlog, and I just feel better and better every day of practicing yoga with you guys over there. And I'm really enjoying being back, playing with polymer clay and making stuff and just kind of just keeping it crafty. I would have never thought that I would have done the base in black because like I wanted it to be like super earthy and all kinds of stuff but I think having black as the base is going to give me a really nice background that will kind of be the underpainting for everything else because like I don't know I used to try to be goth really hard in high school but I am just such a tie-dye wearing hippie <laughs> like um but I do think the, the black is going to be a very nice undercoat for tying everything else that we're doing together. So I may go through and be dry brushing a brown on top of this, or I might have all of it be like how we did on the drawer fronts. I have not decided yet. I kind of had like a rough, loose, very loose vision of what I wanted to accomplish with this, and um... We'll see how that goes. Also, I'm not being too worried about getting it perfect here on the inside. Um, like, if it's hard to reach, I am not trying that hard. But that's just me. You do your piece however perfectly as you like. But I just want to, you know, unless I'm taking the drawers out and really looking at it, I'm not going to notice if it's you know, perfect, perfect right here behind. I, you know, the more I say that, more I'm like, just paint it. Just do it right, Vaughn. Jimmy Christmas. <laughs> like, my inclination initially always is to just be immensely lazy, but I mean, I'm not a perfectionist, not by any, <laughs> like, not by a long shot. But, you know, I do like to try my best. So, there's no point in half ass in it. Cool beans. Okay. Coming through. Pink, pink, pink. Pink, pink, pink. Paint your project. Paint your project. Pink, pink, pink. Pink, pink, pink. Paint your project. Paint your project. There we go. What is Kevin done? No, <laughs> no, not done. Alrighty, yeah, this is going to take forever in a day. Uh, through the magic of editing, womp. Okay, so um, the paint is more or less dry here on the back. So I'm going to just start with my globus splotching. 
And if it turns out that I like this technique better than what we initially did on the drawers, then I may go through and just repaint the drawers, but we shall see. Clean and out my brush. Time to change my brush water, I do think. And then tap my splash, 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 splash. Okay. And now spray, 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 spray. And I'm just going to keep kind of tapping around. Anywhere that it gets like super messy up on the sides, I will go through and kind of tidy that up a bit. Okay. So now I'm actually going to take just a very fine tipped brush like this and start maybe dragging and encouraging some of this pooling behavior around into different parts. And also, I want to try something where perhaps I use, here I have some really intense like nail art pigments, oh, and we've got this like super duper purple. You could also use Perlex pigments, just whatever you have, whatever you like. And I'm just going to get some onto my brush and see if I can't introduce just some veining. Just trying to get a little bit of this purple in there. Start making something happen, you know? I wonder also how leaf would look. And I'm experimenting too a little bit with like letting it drag and pull some of that purple with it. I'm actually wondering how this would look, just kind of sprinkled in. I don't know, it seems to do better dragged, I think. But I am trying to get some spilled out onto the edge here. Just trying to get some interesting pores and things happening. Now, I feel like this is a little too fine of a detail for the back of a project, but the magic happens in the details. I'm actually, okay, what I'm going to do, y'all, is I am going to let this dry and then see if I can't paint in a little bit with the um, purple pigment after it's dry because I don't want to keep smearing around the paint so I really don't want to get in the way of it doing whatever it's going to do and I am going to just one more, a little bit more let it kind of drag and figure something out. I just think that looks so neat. Yeah, we'll let this dry and then come in and do another layer because we may be able to splotch in a little bit more of that green. Now, while this is drying, I am going to go through and touch up over... Oh no! Well, we got to be careful. 
I guess I should let it dry completely before I go through and try to touch it up because otherwise I just drag that pigment, the uh, shimmer through everything, which is not, is not a bad thing. I actually kind of really like it, but I want to be able to be consistent. So I'm going to let that completely dry, I suppose, and then try again. So I had an idea, you guys. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I have these extra pieces of wood that I have cut on my laser and I'm just going to snip through right there and right there and that's going to give us our little edge. So now I can cut, let's mark, let's actually use the tool. Um, And I don't know if I want to leave this, um, bare wood toned, if I want to burnish it with, like, some metallic -y paint. I don't know what's up. But, I do know I want to get all the cat fur off of it first. And then we can just set it in right there. Okay, it looks like I need to actually snip this part a little further back. There we go. <sighs> well, we'll pick that out of there in a sec. Okay. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, I love that. So, pick that up. There we go. So there's that one that we can set in like that. I actually think I'm going to leave it the bare wood. I really, really like that. Except for, of course, it's got paint on it now. We'll see. We'll figure it out. But then I also want to do this one here. <sighs> kind of just layered in on top of that. So let's see if we can, and I do sell these on our website, backtoearthcreations.com. So I'm actually going to lift that and set it off to the side because we can figure this out in a moment. Okay, I'm lining up one last time, trying to figure out where it is exactly that I wanted this sitting. Okay, so the inner corner of where I want it to be sitting is right here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and snip right there. And then it needs to line up with right here. So I'm going to use a straight edge to mark from there to there on all these little pieces of wood. And it may actually get to where I have to, like, saw through it, like in that spot right there. And then from here, we can actually line up that and that. And we can try to make it squared off to right there. Very cool. So we'll see how much of this we can just blunt force smash through because I could also always just sand off the excess points okay there's that yeah it'll be easier to sand that off than uh, anything I think I may be wrong I'm wrong lots of the time actually there's that Ooh. Okay, before we go too much further, go snip you there, go snip you there, go snip you there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So maybe, oh, maybe, well, <laughs> there we go. Just 
figure that out. Because we can always flip it over too. I've got like boogered up sides. So there's that. <laughs> And we can actually pull that out real quick. And we can do our layer, figure out how these line up well with each other. Yeah, those line up pretty well. Okay. You know, we could glue these two pieces together. I think paper quilling is another thing that would look really, really cool right here in this back section. Like, this is a, just a perfect little spot to be able to inset just about anything, I think. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so we'll glue that together. Some nice 3D stuff going on. E. And we could do more, but I think this is plenty. It's doing exactly what I want. Okay, so let's glue these two pieces together. And I'm just going to be using some tacky glue. Some dummy thick. Well, super thick tacky glue. And I'm just using the tip applicator. Just smeared it along. We are going to have some excess squeeze out, but I am going to use a damp paintbrush to remove it before it has a chance to dry. Let me go get some water for my paintbrush. Okay, so our glue is setting up already. So we will just come through, line everything up, give it some good squishes. And we can actually use either some binder clips or some clothespins and just keep everything nice and together. That way as it dries we don't have to worry about it shifting around. I really love binder clips for this, actually. But I basically just try to use whatever I have on hand. There we go. And now you can see all these extra little spots of glue. I just take this really cheap, stiff bristled brush, like it's very coarse bristled, and I'm just kind of spreading it around. I feel like it probably just increases the uh, adhesion, maybe. Now, I would not be doing it like this if we were planning on staining, but with pieces like this, I try to go ahead and stain it first because I'm usually doing different stain colors on different layers, and it's just easier for me that way. And this glue sets up quick, y'all. Like, after that initial clamp and squeeze, 
mostly just wanted to squeeze out any excess but you can see that glue's already setting up pretty quick I just don't want any like lumps and bumps of it that will obstruct the uh, the lines of everything once we start painting because I think what I'd like to do is I want to paint it <clears throat> the same color as what I did the polymer clay and then once the glue's dry I just like pick it out of the bristles or I could go ahead and give it a actually wash the brush out <laughs> I know I've got a gold in here somewhere specifically for a metallic gold. Yep. This should work. Like, not just a yellow tone. I want it to actually be, like, metallic. Mm, that actually won't work. It's not yellow enough. Okay, let me go rummage. So here we have a really nice antique gold by Folk Art. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm gonna use... No. Yes a stiff flat bristled brush and I'm just getting it on the tip and then I kind of want to just go over the surface of what we're doing because I don't want to paint over the black lines or the burn lines rather because that's giving us a really nice contrast I think so I just want to burnish this onto the surface So the more metallic of a paint you can find, the better. And I almost feel like trying to see if we can, I don't know, I can see that getting really messy if we used some uh, Prolex pigments. Yeah, it does not take a whole lot. Probably should have done this, now I'm thinking about it, before <laughs> we glued everything together. But, that's hindsight for you. Maybe on your project you'll do it the easier way. But I'm wondering if maybe using a gold alcohol ink may work a little better. There's no tone. Yeah, because if we had painted this first, we could have done a couple of layers, really built it up. Like, at this point, I don't even really know if it's going to be noticeable too much. That'll be alright. I mean, it really helps that the wood was already a bit of a yellow tone. But I just don't know how much that's actually being metallic. Like, it is certainly difficult, I think, to get wood to look like metal. So... We'll figure it out. Okay, and I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but here we go. <laughs> okay, I am going to try some Prolex powder. Get the brush clean, get off to the side. I am going to use an I'll use that one since it jumped out of the drawer. I am going to use a little applicator tip. 
And I think I'm going to use, what is this? Brilliant Gold. And again, I do have an exhaust fan going to kind of pull those fumes, or not fumes, but the powder away from my face. I'm going to use the lid to burnish up against, though. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't know if doing the paint first helped in, by giving it like a sticky layer to adhere to, but that is much more metallic. And I mean, it wasn't bad before, it just... I, I need it to be intense. <laughs> there we go. Yes, I love it. Very, very intense. I may actually want to go through and go back over this with like copper. I don't know. Whenever I started this project, oh, this is what makes doing anything like big project difficult for me personally. Um, because when I started this project, I was really feeling like antique golds and stuff. Now I'm really feeling copper. So ah, I don't know which to pick, what to do, what to go with. Um, we'll do gold up top and then go through and apply copper to the bottom is what we'll do. And we have like a super brilliant copper over here. That's actually a nail art powder. And yeah, I'm going to be gross and stick the same applicator. It's fine. <laughs> Now the only thing about this nail art powder is it is a little glittery. Meh, I don't mind it. It's just something to be mindful of. Yeah, and it does look a little bit more orange than actual proper copper, but again, I'm not mad. I think I reached my saturation limit on how much powder I can force onto this wood. Oops, totally stuck my hand in it. That's all right. We'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I'm wearing more of the powder than the project is, but that's all right. I do believe. Very subtle difference, but that's okay. Now I'm just grabbing up this piece. Yeah, I do think painting first makes a really big difference in how much these pigments will actually stick to the wood. So let's see if I can't just paint it straight with a copper. And here we have a really nice, also by Folk Art, antique copper. And just so you know, I will go over a project like 12 times. <laughs> Um, and change something very minuscule every time, but I don't mind it a bit. It's okay to change your mind. And it's also equally okay and just as creative and valid to stick to your plan. Like, one person's chaos and creativity does not off balance or negate in any way somebody else's like 
meticulous planning and you know it's one way isn't better than another it's just we all have our different ways of doing what we do so yeah I am gonna go through and darken down this back layer and try to add a little bit of something something to these back very cool yeah this would have been hecka easy hecka easier if I had gone through and done this first, but that's fine. Sometimes you just don't know till you're there. Very cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay. There we are. Putting that on like that. And now, this is just about completely dry. And we can come in. I'm going to get a little bit. Let me clean that brush out a little better. gonna set these off to the side and I kind of want to here's that purple and I'm just gonna stick my finger in it I really am there we go okay it's not working quite as well as I wanted with just sticking my finger in it it's not quite doing what I want with a paintbrush either. What do we do? How wrong if I say? I really like that purple though. I'm gonna try just a little. Oh yeah, okay. So with this brush, with quite a bit on the tip, I am just coming through and adding in just a little bit of something else. And this is a damp brush. I don't know if that's making a huge difference, but I'm just kind of stipling it across there in the center, and it's adding just enough variation and pop of color into what we were doing to make me a very happy crafter. darken in the corners a little bit. I'm definitely going to be adding some of this to the front drawers as well. Very cool. Okay. Putting the cap back on that so I don't stick my hand in it again. There we go. Okay. Now, oh, I never put the cap back on that, did I? I've lost the cap, haven't I? Oh, bother. There it is. Loving that purple, y'all. <laughs> like, loving that purple. Hmm. So now, we can come through with... I'm just going to use this. It's a thinner white glue, but it'll do the trick. Especially since I just want something that will dry pretty quickly. And will adhere really well to the wood without making too many complications for I think we're still going to pour some resin over this, not going to lie I think that'll be pretty neat yeah, just want something that'll dry clear I am trying to make a good connection between all of these because I'm going to try to put a glow resin into the cells of the 
mandala or mandala I don't know I don't know how to pronounce anything words are just made up anyhow I suppose but yeah oh yeah this is gonna ooze everywhere it'll be fine though dries clear it'll be fine I love these little applicator bottles, though. They make life significantly easier. Except for they get a little top heavy. <laughs> we'll just prop you up over there. Okay, so now, just lining that up and smush, smush, smush. <laughs> Now we could set something heavy on this. We could press from the back. Like I'm just pressing with my hand there on the inside. I try to make good connection. Okay, so it definitely looks like I overcut on these parts right here. So if I'm going to try to set resin into those areas and keep colors like sequestered from each other um then i'm gonna need to figure something out but i'm not too worried about that right this second i'm actually gonna use a drawer because i know that it'll fit to give me something to resist against so i just put the drawer up inside the cabinet <clears throat> very very cool yeah, I just think it'd look totally neat to do, like, I don't know. The resin's really going to add some high gloss and pop to this. I thought it'd be neat to do, like, a blue or lime green UV powder. Okay, I just want to put something heavy. Speaking of resin, I'll just use a bottle of resin <laughs> to weigh that down. <clears throat> While we... Grab this guy and start applying our glue. Boop, boop, boop. You could also use fabric glue and freehand your own mandala directly onto the wood. And I recommend the fabric glue if it's like that 3D like puffy glue, you know what I mean? Whoopsie. Oh, I couldn't see because my hand's in the way. So I just drug glue like everywhere. <laughs> ah, it'll be fine. There we go. <laughs> so it has a little bit of an after, a little shadow. I don't mind it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with a good thing. <laughs> that is so neat, though, y'all. I'm very excited about this. Ooh, now what if? Okay, we've got some of this stuff. Do y'all remember? For me, it was like it feels like a month ago, but it was probably just a few days. But we made this mat of. Oh, let me see if I can pick it up without making a mess. This mat of dried greenery. I think I'm going to take this stuff and like settle it in to the corners and make like a little mini garden down in this corner. Maybe with like um, a broken corner of... If I have any broken stones that have like a right angle... That would look really cool right there but i've got all sorts of like this just little little like crud the little mossy bits that we can use and then pour the resin onto it to lock everything into place so let's rummage 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 well it's not a 90 degree 
but it's kind of close. I bet if we keep searching, we'll find something that's perfect. I mean, and I hate to just hide a gemstone on the back, too, because they're so pretty. And I'm probably, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm probably never going to look at the back of this. But just knowing that it's there, that it's a secret. I mean, it's not like a secret secret, but like, you know what I mean, maybe. <laughs> You're probably over there like, no, Vaughn, we have no idea what you mean. You're gibberish. You're just jibber jabber gibberish. Well, I was really hoping I'd have something that would kind of... I don't know, be a little bit more of a right angle, maybe. But sometimes we're lucky enough in this world to find two broken things that fit perfectly. Well, maybe today isn't that day. That's okay, too. Yeah, what we can put there, though. We have some of these super cute little... Just a little succulent. <laughs> How extra <laughs> can a person get? Let's find out. So here's another little one. I think I'm just going to do, yeah, just some little succulents in the corners with like the little moss growing out of them. I think that'll be very neat. Oh, this will be perfect. Just some little, I'm going to tear off just a little section. And this is all going to get just suspended in the resin, so I don't really have to worry about gluing it down too much. You know, I say that, but I probably should just to keep it from like floating and stuff. Hmm, it seems to be behaving. Yeah, we'll be fine. But yeah, and we can just take our little loose clumps and <laughs> just clump them around <laughs> we can totally add some in once we have the resin poured as well and then we have our little tweezers here Just to kind of clean up, because I can't blow on it, because then it'll just be a mess. But yeah, I mean, just a secret little garden, <laughs> just for us back here. And I'm going to tuck that little bit of moss clump behind that flower. Yeah, I think that's pretty neat, T.O. Oh, I just had an idea. What if we set like a little lava dry chip? Where did they go? <laughs> I'm having way too much fun with this, you guys. <laughs> I guess I could have it turned around and just have the jewelry side be the secret. <laughs> So we'll take that and we may still use just a little bit of just a little bit of white craft white craft glue boop 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 and then boop 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 Oh yeah, that's gonna be so cool. I love it. Oh yeah. Now I don't want any of them like poking out like too much though. Still got her. I mean, I don't see why we shouldn't. After all, why not? Why shouldn't we have it poke out? 
These little nuggies are so cute. Yeah, I, I do prefer I'm kind of laying down wide side as opposed to protruding out that away, but it's okay. Gosh, we could do like a whole mosaic like filled in on here, y'all. <laughs> Pretty rocks. Yeah, we are going to have to let all of this dry naturally, but that's okay. Maybe. I'm not very patient, but we'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> I just realized of it. This is going to be a long video, isn't it? Oh well. You clicked on my face. So if you don't like it, I'm not that sorry. Because I'm enjoying the heck out of myself. Doo -doo. Oh, I think that one's too big. Crap. Because it was beautiful. Too big for this, but perfect for something else, I'm sure. That one's weird. <laughs> big too. Are those smaller somehow? I thought, oh they are. They are smaller. Okay. Because I was going to do glow in the dark stuff. But this will be okay. Because I could still do glow in the dark over there. That'd be neat. Now, I don't imagine that I would just use white craft glue if I weren't also pouring resin into this. Just, you know, for the sake of, like, the longevity of the piece. And we'll get to test it out and see, you know. It might last a week and start falling apart. It might last years. Who knows? Another little, little labradorite. Okay. Gotta put these up before I make a mess. Yeah, I'm loving this so much. Like, I cannot even. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Well, I really, I, I keep having to stop myself from just taking a deep breath and like, <sighs> blowing on it. But, I know if I do that it would kind of be a little disastrous for some of this stuff that we've got going on over here so I'm not gonna <laughs> oops well that's gone forever okay now those little rocks get back into their jar and I do think I'd like to go through and clean up the edges, but again, we could probably do that after the resin pour. I have to wait for that stuff to dry before um, putting resin on it. That's just so cool. I, I'm, I'm in love with this. Can't breathe too heavy around it. Okay, so I'm going to set this off to the side to let it dry fully. And while that is happening, I'm going to paint the sides and insides of these black with the same paint that we were using earlier. Okay, so our paint is completely dry, and I have even dry brushed using just a little bit of this coffee bean colored paint. Um, it's a nice kind of matte brown. I've just been using a stiff bristled brush. It's a little uh, too stiff now. <laughs> and I was just kind of scuffing it into the surface so that it would pick up a little bit in tint. So I didn't want as harsh of a black, but I just wanted that little bit 
little bit of color and you can see I've done the same thing over here as well I uh, just made it look a little bit more of like a super duper dark like maybe ebony or walnut uh, but now I'm coming through just kind of spot tacking our handles in place because I'm going to be securing them down by um, resin I think I'm gonna face the front of these drawers I'm going to dome them with resin and I'm going to use that to hold the handles in place so a little bit of glue drying on my fingers already I just want to use this white glue to tack it getting it a little centered up yeah so I can make sure looks pretty good and I'm just gonna set this off to the side I may take like a little bead or something and set it in there or um, something mm, probably not actually I'm probably just gonna do the resin I'm gonna make sure it's nice and centered then I'm setting it off to the side to dry and I'm going to do it again with a little bit more this time because even with the paint on the wood's pretty thirsty so it's holding really nicely onto the glue now I would never if I weren't um oh look how crooked that is <laughs> if I were just gluing I would not just be using regular white glue like this in fact I don't know if I could recommend just gluing the bottom side of this down um, it does need some sort of fastener I guess but I don't know they had their other handles just glued on there I feel like you get out of it what you put into it so I don't want to be worrying about my handles ripping off but I may use epoxy sculpt would hold on to this pretty well you just want to make sure whatever adhesive you're using if that is the only route you're going oh this is a this little applicator was trash anyhow so there we go um Yeah, if you decide to go the adhesive route, just make sure you're using something that is conducive with both wood and metal. I don't think this glue is, but it's just a placeholder. So we're going to let that dry, and then we are going to start doing our resin casting, which I'm really, really excited about. Okay, so I have mixed up with lots of air bubbles because I'm not very good at mixing up my resin, but this resin that I'm using does a pretty good job of letting go of all those bubbles. Um, links to all the stuff that I'm using, I'm sure I've mentioned this already, will be down in the video description. But I'm going to let this kind of rise for a bit before pouring it into our applicator bottle. And I'm actually going to start by <clears throat> removing carefully some of the pieces that we're going to be using just kind of getting everything because I don't want to trap any air bubbles in it and what I'm and I'm going to need to kind of submerge all of this stuff into resin before placing it on our surface so and I've mixed up about four ounces of resin just so that you guys know kind of roughly about how much I'm going to be using. Now I did mix up significantly more than what I need for this project, hopefully, um, because I have a secondary project that's waiting on some resin. So we'll see how that goes, because this, I could be wrong, this may end up using up way more resin than what I'm anticipating. So we can always mix up more, but I hate to have any wasted resin at the end of the day. So I do try to make sure that I do have secondary, like if this is my primary casting, I try to have something lined up for in case I have too much, and then I try to have something lined up beyond that even more. That way, um, you know, I'm not wasting any resin. Okay, so you can see we have quite a bit of bubbles have risen to the top. Let me hook up my heat gun.
Now we're going to want to be super gentle with this because it will melt the cup. Um, but I just want to do a quick little popping, popping, popping. Didn't really pop a whole lot, but last time I tried to do that, yeah, last time I tried to do that, it totally melted the cup and it was a mildly disastrous. So, we can always pop the bubbles after the fact. So I am going to take this and just pour it on into the applicator. And I am uh, actually going to be making a tutorial after this video like with this applicator in particular about how I clean out these applicators to be able to reuse them uh, so if you're interested in seeing that video please be sure to subscribe but also to sign up for our newsletter at backtoearthcreations.com because we send out a notification email directly to your inbox every time we have a new shop update or live stream or tutorial uh, and it's just, it's a great way of staying up to date so you don't miss a thing. Without, of course, having to rely on YouTube's very fickle, um, oh shoot. Well, okay, well I was gonna, let me pour some back in. Because <laughs> I need to coat our pieces, but I don't want to contaminate everything. So, just putting the lid on that. And I've snipped off the little piece there. So I mostly want to just coat our little these guys and I'm just poking them. Poking them a bunch. And this is like silk floral stuff. Again, linked down in the video description. And then we can just set it there. I just want to get it good and coated. That way, hopefully, this will help cut back on bubbles. And I'm not worrying about getting them placed perfectly where I want them to end up being, because I can just use like a toothpick or some tweezers or something to kind of scooch them over um, after it's all said and done. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do like that for now. Let me grab a little skewer. Because I am going to try to get this moss laid down. Kind of where I'd like for it to end up being. And then I'm just going to guide it down into the corner. Same thing as up here. Though we could also use our tweezers. Resin sands really nicely off of metal tweezers. So you can totally... And really I'm just coating the silk floral in resin to make them easier to clean. Um, do the longevity of the piece. Okay. And then we can totally drop some little pieces and bits and stuff. And also resin is a much, much better adhesive than like say, um, just hot glue. I'm going to keep holding on to that. And I'm just coming in using the rest of what's in here to start with. I think we had talked a little bit about doing some uh, glow in the dark pigments, like glow resin uh, stuff. I'm not, I don't know how much I'm going to be doing that on the back side of this, at least on this piece. We may see, you know, later on. 
what's up. And I'm going to try really, really hard to not overflow over the wooden uh, mandalas that we've put on here. So I'm kind of thinking and crafting at the same time. So words are a little hard sometimes. That's okay. Oops, let's set that wet paper towel. So now we can come through with the applicator and be significantly more precise about where we are adding our resin to. So we can kind of get in there and put some resin in on top of stuff. Oops, careful to not drip. And I'm double checking to make sure I'm not overflowing on anything. I am going to tilt that up a bit just to try to get my, my work surface isn't level. What a wonderful world we would live in if it were. <laughs> all work surfaces could just be naturally perfectly level. That would be so cool. So I'm going to focus on using what's in the applicator on these um, smaller parts first. And then we can just take the cap off and fill in the background section if there's enough resin left in there. So yeah, just squeezing out a bit. Ooh. Being careful to make sure I'm not dripping where I don't want drips to be. What's really nice about using this wood that hasn't been sealed for the mandalas um, is it really starts to wick up the resin and is going to help everything to be one cohesively bound, like monolithic unit. Kind of have to be careful in those tighter spaces though because the surface tension of what we're doing may make it want to spill over. And don't, don't feel like you have to overfill. We can always go back and mix more. We could do layers. And also, as my hand gets tired, I have to remind myself that we have a 60 minute pop time. Um, while that isn't, you know, forever, I also don't have to rush. Because I treat it like, if I have 60 minutes for my pop time, I treat it like I really have 30 minutes. Because that's whenever I want to be making sure that at the 30 minute mark, it's like, okay, let's wrap this up so that I can pop the bubbles, so that I can tweak anything if it needs tweaked. but still having 30 minutes to do just pouring some resin on the back of this one piece. Let's not rush, let's give our hand some breaks because we're more likely to make mistakes if we're rushing or if our hands are tired. And again, with the surface tension of the piece, we can actually come in with just a little stick or something. I'd need a smaller stick than that to get into some of these areas. But we can just make sure that the resin is making full contact to all of the edges and it'll start to, like it'll cling to it and then self-level out. Okay, I'm actually going to grab a much thinner toothpick for making sure that we make it up into all oh, the little nooks and crannies. Oh no! Well, I went over in like one spot. That's fine, I guess. I don't know how I feel about putting resin into these sections with the labradorite pieces. 
But you know, it went in over there and it looks okay. So we'll see. You can also snip a larger like opening into the tip of your applicator, but that may not be what you're looking for. So as always, you do you. So again, just making sure everything is going where we want it to. I think that's going to look pretty sweet. Mm, yeah, let's go ahead and I'm going to start just from one side where it's farthest from the stone because I don't want to cap over the stone. I just want it to fill in around it. Okay. Yeah, I'm just now remembering that I'm relying on the resin to keep these stones adhered. So yeah, we're definitely going to have to do this, but that's okay. Because we can always start with just a little bit and then come back and add some more. Then for like on this one over here, I think that'll be alright. And if anything, you could always decide on your own piece if a way that I'm doing something isn't your favorite way. Well, you could do it differently on yours. Because style is one thing, but the techniques remain the same, or at least very similar. Now some of these just might get covered, whether we can help it or not. Ooh, that does have a cool little lensing effect over <laughs> the labradorite. Well, very neat. Okay, so I'm going to start coming through. Yeah, I think from this point we are going to be ready to... Um, And I just set it tip down, like tip down off on some paper towel on the side. And I have a mixing stick to clean up that edge so that I can stop the flow whenever I want to. Much faster than if I just tilted the bottle up. So we'll get a nice, substantial pour on both sides. Oh, that was a little too fast. Oh, let's see how it goes. I'm real worried about it, but it seems to be doing okay. Oof. Okay, that was lucky. <laughs> Let me just set that down grabbing our applicator top, putting it back on so that I can move on to the next part of the project, which is going to be scooching this just off to the side. Again, going to use a little toothpick here to make sure that everything's making a good and solid connection. If its surface tension stops it flowing, you can just drag it a bit in its surface tension we'll start to take it over there. Because we don't want to be skimpy here, but we don't want to overdo it either. Okay, so there's that. And now from here, we can actually start taking some of these little chunks and pieces. 
You know we should really pop some bubbles before we do that though. I don't know, it should be fine. I'll test and see, and if it's not fine, then you'll know for your piece. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna grab like a chunk. Whoops, well it's not where I wanted it, but oh, there's a good a spot as any, I suppose. <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of set it in, and this is gonna help us to get like a really cool, since it's not super glossy moss, I think it'll give us some really neat effects without having to worry about um, it being very plasticky looking. So again, just picking up little pieces. Pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. We could even just use our fingertips and get like crazy with it. And then from there, we can use our toothpick to push things around, if as we want. I really like having a substantial amount of this moss ready for this already. Um, that way we can just grab a clump and go. Super duper happy. Loving it. Very much. Okay, so now the next step is I want to come through and use resin on the surface of these drawers. And so what I'm going to start with is applying in circular motions just with the very tip. I want to get a base layer that will guide the surface tension. So I am squeezing just to keep, you know, flow happening. But I just want to make sure that I'm getting to that edge without exceeding it. Because I don't want stuff to be overflowing. But this is really, this resin really makes the paint come to life. And we can start lobbing some on. If you want to get some big squeezes. And then drag it around. Just however, you know, feels best on your hands. And then also always be mindful of if your work surface has a tendency to be leaning, like mine's downhill away from me, so I don't want to just leave my projects sitting like that for too long. I do have a leveled work surface-ish behind me, um, and that's what I'm going to be doing, like setting these guys on whenever they're done being domed. And just making sure that the resin covers, and I'm, I think I might do a little, whoop, just a little gem right there in the middle. Well, it totally went over. So I'm actually, just to make everything nice and shiny and matching, just going to put resin over the top of the handle too. And now becomes the little bit of a battle of knowing when you've done too much and when you've done too little. Because if we do too little, we'll get some shrinking on this and it'll have a little bit of a warped surface. If we do too much, it is going to risk overflowing off the edges. So there we have that. You can see it's already starting to pull away a little bit over on this side. Sorry, I didn't mean to, did not mean to bump the tripod. I think that's looking pretty cool. So let me set that. Off to the side, and now we're gonna do that same thing on the other two drawers. But before we do that, I just wanna show you guys how I'm going to heat gun this. Cause you can see we have some of these bubbles 
like right there. I'm gonna let the heat gun heat up. You see that popping? Okay, so it does look like it overflowed over the surface of our wood. That's fine, I'm not sweating it, but I do want to make sure that I'm not doing it so much that it starts singeing stuff or melting our little um, moss over in the corners. So I'm going to keep doing this like every about five to 10 minutes until I feel like it's nice and clear as more bubbles rise to the surface. So. I'm going to finish using up this batch of resin, and then I'll meet you guys back here for the next step. So... This is what the drawers are looking like after. And you'll notice I'm still getting quite a bit of like bubbles coming up and through. I'm thinking I should have sealed the wood first. And also, I've got some pretty serious drippage going down the sides. And like this one, mm-hmm, I see you, stinker. Um, so my work surface is not as level as I would have liked to have been, but it is mobile so I can move it to a part of the house that's a little less sloped. Hey guys, so it is the following morning and we've had some successes and some failures. I feel like the back is a giant success, like I'm in love with it. This is so cool, like I cannot get over how much I like this. Um, that being said, and I also think I'm done like done done with the back now um which is perfect because i'm so ready to move on to the next stages which are going to be flushing out the sides and the top so let me just set that somewhere safe off to the side now on the drawers though i was having some real problems with getting all the bubbles to pop it's like the wood just kept percolating new bubbles up from below and also I got some pretty serious um, drippage over on the sides so let's start by trying to find my razor blade that I've apparently lost that's never a good thing to lose is a razor blade um, here's this little guy though I should totally get an actual proper like box knife to do this with yeah okay so okay so I got a box knife blade and I just want to go through and clean up just as much as I can and let me double check and make sure that these drawers still fit because I'm probably going to go through and sand any roughness off of the sides and off of the back if you can kind of see we've got that I kind of like the little patterning though but the drawers protrude out just a little bit, and I, I think that'll be okay. I honestly don't remember if they did that to start with. And I'm debating on if I'm going to do a second resin pour, or if I just want to leave it like this. So, no decisions have been made yet. Except for, of course, that I do need to do some cleanup. And if you've got big pieces, just wire snips or even scissors uh, could work out well we're probably gonna have to go through and repaint as well that's okay just being really careful to just shave that down because you know I don't want to take the wood with me and again just checking to make sure that's not even super necessary to remove the resin off the side. Now, 
on your jewelry box and if I were selling this um I would be way more like I'd clean up the sides sand it probably repaint it and stuff but this is for me and I think I like it just fine even with the bubbles and stuff like I can dig it so now third drawer this one's the messiest of the bunch <laughs> And I, so I'm just coming through, tidying up with my knife. And again, sanding that would probably be a lot safer, possibly faster. We'll see. And let's test fit it. Okay, that one may need a little bit of sanding. We'll see. Yeah, that's going to need some sanding. It doesn't come in and out as smoothly as the other sides. But, y'all, even if I just did this on the front, just painted up the jewelry box, and then did the drawers like this, I think that's a huge improvement over the original just bare wood and I think that looks really really cool so the way that I'm going to sand this is I'm going to set my sandpaper down on my work surface and then just push in one direction to get that sanded and I actually think oh look there haha -ha. we have some sandpaper <laughs> this is 80 grit I think uh, if there's stuff on your work surface, you can see that's starting to sand it down nicely. I also have a belt sander outside, but we tried changing the belt on it, and now it doesn't work. Like, we cannot get the belt to uh, grip onto the sander, and I don't, know, I don't know what's going on with that. Okay, so let's see how much is necessary. Also, if you're doing any significant amount of sanding at all, please wear your mask. Maybe we can shuffle the drawers around. Yeah, because that this top one just kind of seems a little tight. What's going on here? Is there something going on? You can see we had a little bit of resin leaking. You can see it shiny in the corners. Who knows? Maybe that'll help our box hold, hold together. Okay, well that one seems to fit most comfortably in the top, so we'll leave that one there. That one fits pretty good in the bottom. Perfect. Excellent. Very, very cool. I'm really pleased with this, y'all. Okay, now on to the next step. And that is going to be putting away all my razor blades so I don't hurt myself. And then... After that, <laughs> we will be dry brushing. If we just did a little bit of sanding, which one? There we go. And I'm going to be using this stiff, very stiff, because I didn't clean it, um, bristle brush. And I've got some shop towel just right there. Why do I, why do I live like this? Come on, Vaughn. Just give me a sec to try to tidy up my work surface. Okay. So I'm just going to dip into the top of my paint pot. And then I'm just scrubbing it in. To the wood. Making sure I'm not getting any on the front. So I'm actually going to pull all of my drawers out because I'd like to go through and do this to all of my, all the rest of the wood. And to keep from getting things too contaminated, we could use like an actual like palette or something 
uh, but I'm going to just use the cap. Okay, so now from here, you can see we're just dragging a very small amount over the surface. I find it helps to go either just in one direction or back and forth. I don't want to be going in like circles or anything like that. I just want to be catching the high points of our wood. And also keep in mind this does darken down as it dries. And it does not take a whole lot. And I'm trying to, my best to travel in the same grain as the wood. That gives it a pretty cool. I just wanted a very slightly browner looking wood. I don't know, we can go against the grain, across it a little bit. Gives it a little bit of that dry brush, just catching it on the high points feel. So don't listen to me, do whatever you feel like doing. Because <laughs> I'm just bumping around into things. But my emphasis, if you're going to take anything away from this, is that there's no like right or wrong way to be doing this. Just do it. And if you do it and you hate it, you can always just repaint it black and try again. So it's not like we're painting it in gold leaf right now. Acrylic paint is pretty affordable, pretty easy to work with, leaves a lot of wiggle room for experimentation. Coming in here, getting a little bit more on my brush. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Yeah, I'm really glad I transitioned from putting the all the clay on to start with. I think I'm really going to like having where we made the clay pieces and then ap apply it to the wood. Oh my gosh, there's so much. <laughs> if your arm's not tired, are you even crafting? Like, the answer is yes, but still, I think you get what I'm laying down. Okay, just a little bit more. And you don't have to use brown, you could do this with any color. You could do this with metallics, that would look super cool. If you want something very, very shimmery. Cool beans. I'm going to do just a little bit up here on top, but we're actually going to be covering the top for the most part with other stuff. gives me plenty of room to experiment. And see what we like. There we go. Very cool. Rinsing out the paintbrush. Rinsing out the paintbrush some more. Oof, I wish I took better care of my brushes, but I'm a creature just chock full of bad habits. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in there to soak for just a minute. Okay, so we have all that. And now, 
here. Oh, here. There we are. Let us use just a little bit. What do I have big on top? Yeah, I've got big on top and small on bottom. And I have them about a quarter of an inch away from the uh, top and bottom like edges. Okay, so I'm going to be using this super thick tacky glue. I actually store it with the cap on. It's very important. <laughs> um, just upside down uh, wherever it is that I'm like even just storing it like this is so so helpful because that way you're not having to wait for your glue to move down and so we have double checking yep big one up top little one down low and i'm just going to come through and apply our glue to both of these and I don't mind a little bit excess I think that'll be just fine okay putting the cap back on put it back in its container and we could use a an old paintbrush I really like just a little like popsicle stick Just to start smoothing it around possibly to scrape off any excess but I don't mind leaving the excess on there because we're gonna be applying like mosses and stuff around the edges and I think that'll look really cool to just have the glue poking out and then we can just apply the moss directly to that so Moving any dog hair as it accrues. Very neat. Now, the thing about this, though, is it's still going to take this glue a little while to dry. So before I really start applying, um, like, standing it upright and applying our finishing touches, uh, I do want to make sure that it has the opportunity to dry completely. Because otherwise, it will just start to, like, slide down. <laughs> like... I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, they're sliding on me. So, possibly some super glue might have been a better decision for less slip and sliding. But this does dry clear. I'm not concerned about leaving little bits because, again, we're coming through and putting moss on all of these, like surrounding them. So, now I just want to make sure that I can. And I'm just going to use the drawers for that. Pull that even. No, that's not really going to work, is it? Okay. Well, give me just a minute while I try to figure out. <laughs> I could have thought ahead, but I ain't about that life, apparently. Well, because since I glued it to the other side, I've got it tipping one way and then the other. Oh, didn't mean to bump the tripod. Haha. -ha. I just have these chopsticks that I modified to have extended fine tips. Um, and that's bringing us not perfectly flat. I would not you know, rely on this if I were casting resin, but it shouldn't give us such a slope that um, you know, our, our cabs are gonna roll away on us. Well crap, what was I even popped up on then? There we go. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it is in the right position and I'm gonna go do something else for a few hours and then come back to this and uh, we'll start doing all the fun stuff. So it has occurred to me that whatever I'm gonna be doing on this, I'm gonna be using the same kind of glue. So while I have this surface lifted, I may as well go through and 
attach all the bits and pieces that I wanted to attach and then just let all of the glue dry like together. So we have more of our tacky glue. Just removing the tip. And I'm just going to kind of glob it on in the spots where it's like, okay, I'm going to be putting some stuff there and there and there and there. And then I may use something a little less thick. Um, to go around in other spots. So I'm just kind of squishing and stretching this around. Anything that's going to be on the edges too, I do like to use this thick glue. That way I just, it doesn't drip nearly so much as what maybe a runnier glue would. Also, I really like the craft glues like this because there's no smell, which after resin is really, really nice. Even the low VOC resins, there's still, you can tell that it's there. Okay. So now I'm just gonna break off a little piece of this moss. Kind of just crumbling and stumbling, smushing it around. And oh, yeah, that's pretty nice. I like that. Well, coming off of my support beams. There we go. And I'm just setting these bits that we had mixed with glue earlier on. And I'm really just trying to get like the bulk of everything laid down. Like we can go in and add more later for sure. But I just want to get just a little bit. I'm debating if I want to put some little, you know, it would help tie in the back. These are just some little uh, succulent bunches. But I like to actually go through and just remove all the little florets. Oh, I'll have to retrieve that one. But yeah, so I'm just going to pop all the little heads off of these. And then I like to save the branches for clumping stuff on for like fantasy trees and stuff later. Okay, so I got all of the little, I don't know, in my mind I call them cabbages, but they're little, all the little succulent blossoms, um, little heads. Uh, and I keep a lot of the little stuff that I like to use in fairy houses just in an organizer. This seems to have dried enough that I can have it off of its support and actually have it nicely angled towards the camera, which is cool. Let me see if my coffee is cool enough to... Oh, that's a decent drinking temperature. All right. <clears throat> okay, so from here, just for speed's sake, I've been filling this little applicator with this glue because it's a lot easier to deal with. Just a little... Just a little thing instead of that huge honking bottle, but it is a little bit of a pain to pop the head off of this little bottle, so we'll kind of just figure it out as we go. 
and I'm just coming through doing a little bit of an edge around there a little bit more glue a little more glue there we go and come around one more And now, if, if you're doing this and your stuff feels a little loose or a little weird or anything like that, we are going to be going through with this Mod Podge, like how we did on a previous tutorial, actually, and kind of set all of this stuff just a little more. So, I'm going to just plop that guy, give him a good little smush. And sometimes, I don't know, we might need a little bit, some of the dummy fix stuff on that guy just so that we can mount it up a little bit higher get a little bit more surface contact there we go and now smush it there oh that's so nice I love that okie dokie and now ooh, I've got another little color this one and I like these guys because they're plasticky so they'll be easy to clean whereas if I use any fabric -y, like fabric style silk floral or even the preserved moss instead of this um, diorama moss that we're using it's just it's, it's very difficult to get it to remain looking like not a science experiment um just because once it gets dust and dog hair and stuff in it it's hard to recover that so oop, did a party foul and set my bottle down on its booty yep and even just that little bit this stuff's so thick it's difficult to get it to uh you really have to wait to get it to come back to the tip and so knowing that i'm an impatient person I try to just avoid that entirely. And I'm smushing some little globs there. And I'm going to do another one. You, again, you could use hot glue, but I think this stuff works just fine. Doing a nice little cluster. And I'm going to cap back up. And from here, I'm going to make a little. Where my tweezers go? Oops, sorry, loud noises. Um, I just felt like throwing things, apparently. There we go. Oh, some glue on my shirt already? Really, Yvonne? Okay, and then we're just going to pick up a little piece and plop it on down and in. This is where I really love to have the little crumblies already crumbled because we can just take them and make and just start filling in some of those gaps. In and around. And also I'm finding myself wondering we also have some little fronds I think I got these at like Walmart but again nice and plasticky so I'm just gonna pull a couple of these out it can take a little while to build up a nice fairy hoard of um, odds and ends and little bits but once you've got that built up it gives you a really nice broad array of different things to uh, incorporate Awesome. So for these little guys, what I like to do is just rip a little frond off and then just plant it down in there. And you can even take like the head section and just plant it down and in. And that way you can get some nice little variation different textures, it's not all just moss. Okay, and now we do have, this is a bag of 
little clumps. It was like um, more diorama stuff. I will have it linked. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's slightly more solid, bigger pieces of like foam that you can still pull apart, but that I think nestle down really nicely. And it gives us a little bit of color variation, but it also gives us a little bit of a texture variation as well. And I like to do just a little bit of that, a little bit of the clump stuff that we've done. And I do like just giving it a good solid smush into what we're working on. And I like to, it's great for packing in, in between other areas. I always hesitate to zoom in because then I start wandering out of frame, but on a big piece like this, it should be okay? <laughs> Question mark. But yeah, you can kind of just pack it in as like a little bit of a filler. And again, we are going to be going over this with that um, spray fixative. Oh, I'm just going to use one of these mushroom caps. Oh, it really doesn't want to stay up, does it? Ah, okay. Well, we'll just, we'll figure it out. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant struggle. But yeah, using that spray fixative on top of this will help stabilize all of this stuff. Smush, smush, smush. When in doubt, smush it out. Smush, smush, smush. Oh, I'm loving that already. And again, I don't mind trying out a bunch of different, like, materials and techniques because this piece, for me, is not for sale. It is for me, just for my, for my own personal use. And so I think that is the perfect time to get kind of weird with it and try stuff that you otherwise might not normally. There we go. Just kind of tucking that and positioning it in. Then doing another little segment of the fluffy stuff. No, it's too fluffy. Like, the stuff that I made these out of is too small and fluffy on its own, I think, for just sprinkling on. It's a little bit more of a mess than I'm willing to make right now. So again, just tearing off little clumps. I really like making it nice and dense and also we can always go in and see how this looks after it dries maybe hit it with a stiff paintbrush to see what flakes off and then from there add in more layers this is very very layering friendly which I think is a good thing Oh, doesn't that just look neat, though? I'm kind of in love with it. And so from there, we can also... We've got this little chunk here. So we can kind of, up top, smush in some little wiggly layers of this to make it look like it's growing and hanging down. Am I even in frame? No. <laughs> and so I'm just ripping off just little little segments like that. 
Now this stuff is harder to clean, but by having it at the top where it's like hanging down, I find I have slightly less trouble with it. Than if it were, you know, say like on the bottom and it started accumulating dust. There we go. Just smushing everything around. Then we can, I'm actually going to start on the tip of this one. Just to kind of build it up. You know, as soon as I say that, though, I change my mind. Don't feel like you have to work one way or another way, or it's perfectly okay to be constantly changing your mind in your artwork. That's how it evolves. Oftentimes, I personally feel very limited by my own creativity, and I kind of get stuck in the same, you know, stuff that I enjoy doing, but sometimes I really like the challenge of this is not what I planned, but this is what's happening. And something way cooler than I feel like I could have ever planned will start happening because it's like, oh my gosh, check that out. I wouldn't know what. <laughs> and it can sometimes be very surprised by the chaotic creative forces of just piddling about in my craft room. I'm focusing more now on slightly smaller pieces just to really get it up and in that crevice. And so we can break off slightly smaller chunks. Whoops, throw them on the ground. Guess I'm not using that one today. You can always take another little pinch. And keep in mind, a lot of that white is going to dry and become clear. So we don't really have to worry about getting solid, constant coverage. There we go. I have to say, you guys, I really, really love this. Especially the modeling between the two uh, greens. The nice, just variation in shades. Really digging it. So just taking that. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> If you can't get excited about your own work, then what's the point even? So, like, I love just that feeling of like, ah, it's starting to come together. <laughs> like, that's so fun. So, sometimes you have to be your own biggest fan. Because I'm really lucky that I've got y'all. But also... Self-validation is important. And there's a whole lot that I do that is just for me. And I think that's really important. In today's age, everything can feel like, gotta do it for the gram, gotta do it so I make it look cool so I can take a picture of it so I can share it on, you know, Facebook. Or don't forget to craft just for you. Like... Do a project, like, sometimes it can be a really good idea to purposefully make time for yourself to work on something that doesn't sell well, that isn't super trendy and marketable, that isn't, you know, the coolest, most interesting thing in the world for making a YouTube video out of. It just do, do your creativity for you because that's going to keep your battery refilled better than anything. So I think that's so cool. Okay. <laughs> so 
yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. I like it. Oh my gosh, the lavender egg. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna leave this here, let it dry, and then we will start doing similar things to the other side probably in like an hour. And I do have a fan going on this, so maybe that'll help. We'll see. So our glue is drying up nicely. And I have to say, I'm really, really loving how this is coming out, um, like so much. I may end up adding, going back in and adding in some more after it's all been said and done, but we'll figure it out as we go. Like, I may actually add some puffy glue, or not puffy glue, um, puffy mosses to more of these areas after the fact, and just to see how it ages. But now we need to start working on, before I work on this other side, I figured I could go ahead and start doing some things on the top because this has really deviated. I just can't get over that lab, you guys. Like, that is so pretty. Um... This has deviated a little bit from my original design. The back certainly has. Um, we actually, we could work on the bottom here for just a moment. The glue on the side has dried enough that I can uh, turn this upside down. And I think what I'm going to do, gosh, am I going to use UV resin? Am I going to use epoxy sculpt? What are we going to do here? Because I'd really love to set these magnets and what I did is I put a little bit of paint onto them and while it was wet I took it and I set this Altoids tin smoosh and marked the paint where I wanted the magnets to end up being um so I mean I don't really feel like waiting the 24 hours for the resin so we may use, I mean, the sun's out. <laughs> the sun's out. Let's use the UV resin. So to do that, I am going to go ahead and super glue, I think, is how I'm going to start this. Nope. Oh, took off too much. There we go. So I am going to, hopefully without gluing myself to the project, bloop, some super glue bloop some super glue bloop some super glue and bloop some super glue and then tighten that cap back on and now we're going to take this magnet and the magnets stick regardless of size you know it is just metal so i'm not sticking two magnets to each other here i am just sticking magnet to metal so I don't think we have to worry about uh, the pull like polarity of the magnets maybe well, I don't know if any of y'all know stuff about magnetism and things like that let me know down in the comments because as far as I'm concerned like it's wizard wizardry um but I mean I know it's not wizardry but I'd have an easier time explaining how it's wizardry than I would actually explaining the science. So. Okay. We could technically just leave it like that. Oh, that one's way out of whack. But it's stuck on there now. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if I'm going to cover it with the UV resin. I mean, that should really, really set it into place, though. But we'll let those dry setting that off to the side. I'm going to be using more of this same black acrylic paint that we've been using. Lord knows I got a bunch of it. I've had this thing for like a couple of years too. This this little, little goes a long way with this paint. Let's see if this paintbrush has gotten any better off. He's so wrecked y'all. Poor little paintbrush. You deserved a better life than what I gave you. But your work is not done yet. You will live to paint another day. Okay. So, just prepping up a shop towel. Yeah. I think I'm going to paint this with the lid open. Though, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, with it open. 
And we're probably going to end up doing a couple of coats. of this acrylic paint too. Whoop, got a little bit of something in there. Just painting, trying to get nice even coverage. There's probably some sort of paint out there that's perfect for painting Alploid cans. But I just got acrylic. Cool, so I'm just going to set it down like that. And then I really want to start covering up this lid. Okay, how are we going to do this? <laughs> oh no. Okay, I'll just hold it from in there because I do want to get all sides and corners and everything. You know, this would have been a really cool project to have covered in polymer clay too, but I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe on my next project that's like this because I don't know how much thicker the polymer clay would have made the final piece and I don't know how much that would have... Um, like, I think it would have been too thick, is, I think is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I'm not going to paint the inside um, ledge right there, you know? Yeah, I am. Oh, my doggies. Paint, paint, paint. Pop, pop, pop. There we go. I'm going to try to go ahead and get that edge all the way around. Okay, and I guess I'm just going to sit here and hold this till it's dry. <laughs> I did not think this through. Um, <laughs> there we go. Okie dokie. So I am going to set this down on just my metal shelf next to me. So there's very little surface area making contact. And yeah, we'll, we'll do a couple of different layers of paint. Like a couple of coats, I guess. Um, and that'll be pretty good. Alrighty, so now, and I may coat it super heavy with some Mod Podge as well. I'm gonna see how that holds up. I think I just rubbed paint all over my eyeballs. Eh, it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so now we've got the first steps of that going. I just love the way that this looks, you guys. Like, oh, that makes me so happy. Let's start working on the top. Okay, so my original thought is that we would have this little cute candle holder and we have this very cool slice of like amethyst cabochon that I'm just gonna prop it up a little. And then we would have around that these honkin' chunkin' smoky quartz crystals poking up out of there <laughs> like i don't <laughs> this is gonna be the bougiest of uh <laughs> of jewelry boxes and i think i'm okay with that like why not really and then okay so keep visualizing that little crown of you know and i had started making some polymer clay glow in the dark canes um, even did like a whole tutorial about it and everything and on, I don't think I'm gonna use them for this project y'all um, But they don't fit into my little drawer Crap. I guess I'll have to smoosh it a little thinner <clears throat> But yeah, the uh, I don't think the little um, Glow-in-the-dark leaves are gonna fit the aesthetic as much as what my original like thought was yeah that fits perfect into the drawer now so um, but I do think I'm going to be able to fit in these glow-in-the-dark mushrooms that I'd like to have kind of training out the top in different locations. So I need to make their stems, and I kind of want to cap them in, like, a metallic purple resin, maybe? 
that'd be cute. Um, and I'd like to incorporate the little succulent pieces. So we have these little guys that we can kind of incorporate around. I mean, not in the front, obviously, because, well, I don't know, maybe below where the amethyst would have the candle coming through it. Um, but I have also these bigger guys that I'd really like to use. Oh yeah, kind of coming out the sides. Then with like little mushrooms poking through. I've got that one. Got, oh, this one's kind of funny looking. Kind of like that, maybe. All right, I'm going to rummage through and see what all I've got. Surely that's not the only... Okay, here we go. There's another... Oh, a little fat succulent. I love it. <laughs> With the chubby little leaves. So cute. So those two. We also have this little guy. I don't know. I kind of like those two best. Um, and then, of course, when it's not being a candle holder, I could just <laughs> make a little cap. Um, that way... The candle holder itself doesn't get all goopy. We may actually end up doing that. Um, <laughs> just make a little lid for him. And then, oh, what's this? Look at this guy. Ah, because I got like a big mixed pack on Amazon that had all of these really cool. Oh, you know what else would be neat if I had, like, if I. Oh, I need to do something with that. Straight up. Ooh. Okay this little guy <laughs> so yeah we'll be we'll be a rummaging but I think instead of making my own polymer clay that's gonna need bait I'm gonna stick to just using the epoxy sculpt that is a chemical reaction um, in that way we don't have to worry about baking anything except for of course our little mushroom stems because I do want them glowing in the dark <clears throat> but I think we will sculpt everything else first and then see where the mushrooms would fit in. Okay, so this is Epoxy Sculpt. It is by Avis Studios. They are amazing. And it's a part A and part B equal part um, epoxy. Um, very similar, I think, to like maybe Mighty Putty or you know anything like that. And it has, gosh, what's the pop time? Wear disposable gloves. Check. Measure equal parts of A and B. Kind of check. Uh, I make such messes with this stuff. It's quite sticky to start with, by the way. But it does have, like, it's kind of sticky phase that I really like to, like, that's my opportunity that I like to stick the stuff in there. And then it has a slightly less sticky phase that, um, will kind of... You'll see. Uh, words are hard right now. Okay, so that's about a giant avocado pit size of one part. And I've dug out with part A with my right hand. I'm going to be digging out part B with my left hand because I'm an animal. Um, ooh, this is kind of stiffer. But, okay. Where did the instructions go? I guess they're only on one. Um ready to use working time is one to three hours so that's pretty good now that being said I do try to mix maybe a little less than what I think I'm gonna need because I can always mix up more and this stuff this jar is like two years old I usually use the gray more than anything but I really like having this black as well Because Epoxy Sculpt does paint. It takes paint really well. Okay, just a little bit more, I think. I'm making a huge o glob of it because we're going to, well, need a huge o glob of it as I wrestle it out of the jar. <laughs> cool. Yep, about the same size. And swoosh. And now, <laughs> I like to... Do the old fold and roll. Mm. 
Let me go ahead and get the lids back on to our jars. I mean, it won't dry out, but I mostly just don't want to be dropping crud in there. There you go. Mm -hmm. Put the little lid back in. There we go. Just really struggling with this and you want to make sure that there's no streaks or anything like that okay so now I'm just gonna tear off a smaller portion and from here I'm going to start with let's pick up our little glass now I'm just gonna press that right there and smush our glass nice and centered where it's making good contact it's nice and level i can always clean it up with an alcohol pad later um cool 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 now like especially on bigger projects like this you can really see how this would get used up fairly quickly Ooh. especially like a big chunk hunk of chunk of clay like this i hear you kitty you're going to have to wait just a little bit, though. <laughs> Very cool. And so now, tearing off another little chunk. I'm going to kind of... Let me see if I can... in the camera just a bit. So now from here, we're just coming around, edging our stone in some clay. I think we're going to need more space than that, aren't we? To get where our crystals go. <clears throat> yeah, because if this guy is going to be sitting on top of everything like that, this is going to have to be positioned like here. And I don't even know what I want to set that on top of. Just smushing this. Um, I really want that facing forward. And kind of decide which sides we want showcased. Smush, smush, smush. Yes. Pulling off just a little bit more. That's not really centered, is it? Let me just scooch it over a bit. Figure out where the center line is. To so make a nice little thick thick base and then just propping it on top like that very cool kind of blending things in together a little bit this one I'd like this little flash in there to be coming forward so that's gonna be well, that guy sits. I'm 
kind of thinking. Okay. I'm reconsidering a lot of this. I'm going to have to build this in stages, I do believe. So I'm going to start with, we've got the cup attached. That's a pretty good start. <laughs> um, so now from here, I think I'd like to make a little arc so that these pieces are joined together in the way that I would like, but it's hollow in the center. Let that set up and cure. Um, and then we can attach it to the top here after it's kind of sorted itself out. Hmm. In which case, this part in particular may be very good to do in polymer clay because then I can bake, but I already have this stuff rolled out. Okay, we'll just do it in the epoxy sculpt. Well, hey, baby. What's up? So I'm just cap cupping the bottom so we can get held on too nicely. I'm going to do that same thing to the other two. Just equal portions as much as possible. Gosh, this one's so pretty. And then, kind of joining them. There we are. Now you can see we're just joining it together and then we can lift it off and I'll probably end up setting it on a silicone mat after we've shaped it and stuff. So just joining them together nicely. I'm just holding it up to our candle cup. Ooh. It's difficult to do, I don't have enough hands. But hopefully you'll see soon how that all comes out. And now from here, rolling this out just a little bit because also since we don't have to apply heat to this I'd really like to um, be able to go ahead and add some of our succulents and different like pigments and stuff to get this to really look cool Those two joined together. I'm now going to roll it a lot of the same techniques as what we would use with um, polymer clay can also work pretty nicely with epoxy sculpt. Just to give it some cool texture. <laughs> I'm just making a little bit of a support lip right there to kind of hold that in to how everything's going. And that'll give us something to attach to. Because hmm. we can Oh, what can I use? I can use a oops, 
Prolex container to hold. <laughs> nope, that's too tall. Okay. But I might be able to use just one of these little guys to hold that up. Yeah. Maybe one and a half. Maybe this guy is not too tall. Ow, I just stabbed myself. Nope, still too tall. Well, dagnum it. Hmm. How long did I say? Got all sorts of odds and ends, but none of them are the correct size. Mail. Fooey. Okay. I'm just making like a little segment here that we can fill in because I don't want a bunch of light escaping out the sides. I really want it to all just be really focused through that amethyst. So I'm just filling in that section right there. And it doesn't gotta be pretty, it's just got to work. Well, that looks all sorts of jank, doesn't it? <laughs> Alrighty. So now we get to start trying to make this look less, um, not like a nightmare or anything like that, but just more on purpose. And so I'm going to be doing that by just using a ball stylus to really um, add some texture. This is also going to help kind of marry the segments together. Because really, I'd hope that all of this is going to end up being kind of covered up with moss and greenery and different things. But just in case it doesn't, it'd be really cool if it looked on purpose. Because if you think about it, if like the worst part of your piece still looks amazing, or if the least essential part of your piece still looks like, you know, you put a lot of thought and effort into it. And what's more is if you do put a lot of thought and effort into it, that's really, you're building a good foundation for everything else that you're adding to that piece. So just because it might not end up being visible doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, try. Or care. <laughs> like, trying and caring will get you a super far away. Like, it's, um... You know, what kind of skeleton is something built off of cheap or lazy bones? Okay, so now we've done that, and now we can come through with the smaller side and add in a little bit more detail that way. And I actually really like to go through with the smaller side and then go back over it with the large side again, and that can give some really interesting effects. Very cool. Okay, so now from here we can add just a little bit of gold pigment. So just applying with my finger. My gloved finger even, but that's okay. Oh yeah, that looks cool. I 
I prefer my middle finger, I'm just gonna say. I feel like I have more control and mobility. Now again, this is probably gonna be covered, but just in case some of it's showing, this is gonna help show off a lot of the detail. And it's fun, so why not? <laughs> I mean, really. Very cool. Okay. Ooh, it's got some sort of storms blowing up outside. Okay, so there's that. And now... <coughs> Excuse me. I hope it's nothing too rough. We have, let's do some cute brighter greens, if we can, just bloop, right in between the two there. And then, do we have another green? We sure do. It has a little bit of like a red in it. Yes. And that one's a little bit taller as well, so I can just bloop, ha ha. And then we may be able to fill in between that with some... Uh, moss, but I really want to make sure that there is not I don't want anything flammable happening, you know ah, I am totally engulfing my little amethyst crystal right now so I'm going to lift this off of the back make sure that we still have a channel for the light to go through with our amethyst and get that nice and centered up Excuse me. Ah, I actually really like the way that looks on the back, too. I'm just going to say. <laughs> yeah, getting that kind of opened. And we have some of that going on. Ooh, we can take one of these hairy little guys. And smirch. Oh, I love it. And then ooh, another one of these guys. And love it. Ooh. Oh no. Oh, he jumped out of there. Blew all the dog hair off. And even if it doesn't hold well, just the fact that we're getting a spot planted for that succulent, then it'll give us something that whenever we do go through and glue it, it will, um, have a little, like a footprint to settle on into. Okay. And I think, let's just see how this goes, because that guy really does not want to stay. Well, maybe we'll do... No, I really wanted to do one of those green ones. Huh, I know. We can come through with our wire snips and remove the bottom row and I always save all those little petals because you never know when they might be just perfect for something and that gives us a longer stem so now we can come in and swoosh so our epoxy sculpt has definitely gone past its sticky stage because there at the beginning when we were first mixing things together it would have totally been holding on to all that stuff so again making sure we're nice and centered so not another cute little one with a long stem that we can there sure is It's a little too long on the stem though. Oh, it's got some metal in it. So I am just gonna come in here like this. Wait, where'd the top part of that? You know, I don't know. There we go. perfect and I love it. Okay, so I'm going to let this cure for a couple of hours, I think, um, just to let it harden up enough that we can start stacking the different things together. I am going to take just some lens cleaner and clean up the glass cup holder, and then I'll meet you guys back here. Alrighty, so I have another glob of 
epoxy sculpt mixed up and check this out you guys like so that's how it's looking from the back side and you can kind of see the way the light cuts through the amethyst so i'm gonna try stabilizing this like right there <clears throat> with some epoxy sculpt i'm gonna start by attaching it here to the base and then giving it a real solid smush because from here we can then determine how we're going to proceed okay I kind of wouldn't mind it a little closer there we go and now from there we can push and smush that in let's get it nice and straightened up vertical through the center line again trying to make sure everything's looking nice and tight and tidy my arms are like so tired from we're doing a year of yoga over on my other channel the monster vlog that's like my personal channel where I basically put anything that's not crafty so like gardening vlog stuff hummingbirds from the feeder chickens being cute dogs being cute randy being cute <laughs> just whatever comes up um and i've just finished another yoga segment and i'm conditioning this clay <sighs> so i'm a noodle <laughs> right on okay so that's looking pretty cool i kind of want to set that right there and this right there so let's see I'm gonna trim that down just a bit pretty cool that it's just extruded plastic that way we don't have to worry about the difficulty of snipping through like um, <clears throat> metal or anything and I'm actually just gonna give it a solid smush over like that there we go and then I'm gonna take on the other side and give it again just a nice solid smoosh now I've been debating and I don't actually know how much I'm going to be putting like a live candle in this and I want to make sure I'm not coming too far forward I'm actually gonna use just a little bit of clay I'm gonna lean it forward just enough that I can then smush it out that way we do get some support from two points it's not just propped it's actually attached here on the back too so now let's tap that in You know it's a good jewelry box when it farts like a lumberjack i'm just saying <laughs> so i don't want to build up too much um of the false greenery or anything like that i kind of just want and i don't even actually know am i going to be able to incorporate i don't i don't think i'm going to be incorporating the uh the glow-in-the-dark mushrooms on this i just i don't know you guys i'm sure i'll find a use for them on another project but i think for today we may just disassemble taking a little butt out of this one and giving it a snip so that it'll sit more comfortably and then we can actually take these petals and snip them apart just gonna scrap the core we can use these petals to kind of <laughs> uh, hide other things so just kind of grabbing a little pinch of this epoxy sculpt that's a little too generous of a pinch 
framing this around. Whee! This is my rootin' tootin' jewelry box. <laughs> And I like wrapping it around just to get a little bit extra grab. It seems to hold pretty well to the plastic. And then just incorporating it. Doing A little grabbing. There we go. Let's see if maybe building up a little. No, I don't think that's necessary. We might just shoosh, cram that in there. Maybe do it at an angle. Yeah, sure, why not? And now from here, our little Altoid tin. I only did two coats of paint and then I realized it's probably just gonna get super duper scratched off anyhow. So we'll leave it secret and messy. Okay, Ooh, we do have some super cute little fern frond here. That's in the same color scheme that I really enjoy. And I don't know if that's gonna have a place here, but it's always nice to consider. I do have some leftover little succulent petals from a different project that ooh have that you know I think I have some of this maybe in here here we go oh my gosh I can't believe I almost forgot about these guys boom look at that beautiful close that drawer back but we can totally take this and pop some of the heads off and it is just gorgeous what reminded me of it is that little bit of coloring right there I was like So we can take this and actually just smoosh it in there on the back side. Because with the way that my vanity is, my dresser, like, this won't ever be making, like, full contact with the wall anyhow. So we can take that and then we can go, like, smoosh. And then we can take one of these and we can go, like, maybe smoosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm loving it. And then we'll give it a little... Oh, no. There's no smooshing spot there. So we'll just put some up on its booty. Smush. Oh yeah. I love it. <laughs> and well, y'all probably wouldn't be surprised by this at all, but I was very like distraught with myself. I got like a 100 pack of LED fairy lights for super cheap. Like little LED um, tea lights lost every single one of them. I have no idea. I put the whole box. I was like, I'll put them here. That way I don't lose them. Yet here we are. <laughs> so I'm a wee bitty bit frustrated in myself at this exact moment. Um, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. <sighs> Sighing intensifies. Um, so I actually think I'm going to split a little bit more of this off. Because we could, if we had a, a couple more crystal clusters, we could put like a crystal in on each side, maybe. Or I'm probably just going to take this. I'm knocking all sorts of the little clumps and stuff off. But that's good. It's actually very good that we are knocking all the clumps off. Because if it's if it can't hold up, it doesn't need to be on there. And I'm just stacking in some of these different ooh, little succulents. He's such a cute little guy. All goobied in there. I see you being cute. I don't think I don't see you little cabbage looking. There we go. Now I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. I'm just going to plop that down and then we're going to do... I do want a little bit of symmetry but not so much that it's like, hmm. I'm going to mix it up and add in a different color variation right there and do our little fuzzy cabbage looking succulent in the top right there. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we're going to need to 
pat that out just a little bit again. I kind of want to put something of significance right there in the middle, but I don't, I'm not sure, not entirely certain what I should do. Um, maybe a very nice little labradorite might be kind of cool. I really thought I was going to go the mushroom route on this. I really did. I mean, I took all the time to sculpt them. That one's really pretty. There's that one. Trying to get the best angle. There we are. Actually, I think at this point I can take my gloves off. Oops. Yeah, I'm just getting clumsy and losing stuff. Okay. And I don't like eat it or anything, but the epoxy sculpt's pretty uh, user friendly. Like, not a whole bunch of fumes or anything like that. Oh, that one's so pretty. Shout out to my friend Judy Allard who sent these to me. She's an absolute goddess. So pretty cute. Ah, but I need something just wee bitty. You look wee bitty enough. Okay, I've got to retrieve these other ones. I don't want to just be losing all these pretty knots anywhere. There we go. Okay, Ooh, okay, so pretty. Okay. I will set that in like right there because again this is the face of this of the jewelry box so I really want like some super pretty labs set in those are looking pretty good very cool I may actually not have to put any fake moss up on the top. I mean, I might do a little bit here on the sides, but I'm kind of cool with it just being like, like that. Ah, and it just occurred to me, y'all, that we can actually take these little clumps and just smush them in like that. Oh, if they hadn't been falling off of the sides, I don't think I would have thought of that. Oh, how fortuitous. So yeah, I'm just going to take some of these little clumps, the, the hard clumps from where we like uh mixed it with glue earlier i don't know maybe this after no i'm gonna go specifically with the hard clumps that way we can kind of force press them in <laughs> oh this is so neat absolutely love it where did them tweezers go nope lost them okay that's fair. That's what I get for existing. <laughs> it's like, not tweezers for you. Okay, so I'll just use these tweezers. Nope, those are too, like, holy on -y. I need some tweezers that, like, do not take their job seriously. And that, but that was my other ones, though. They were perfect for it. They only held on to stuff, kind of. You know what I mean, though? Uh, like they weren't going to grip my whatever it is that I'm holding to death. Okay, I'm going to set that down there. Kind of just smirch. Setting it right there and smirch. I really want to go on a walk this evening because it rained today. And so I know the toads and stuff are going to be out just hollering at each other. And I love that. And I can hear the cicadas and all the bugs yelling at each other out in the yard. 
I hated me, but I get off my lawn. Is what I always think of whenever I hear them just doing their, it's either a territorial or a mating call. Like, that's, that's all they ever talk about. Oh, that looks so cool. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just going to hide anywhere that I see, like, just some, just some black epoxy sculpt that needs a little something something. I just smushed that in. And the nice thing about this too is even if it starts having a bad day and starts falling all to pieces, um, I can just glue, a, like super glue the epoxy sculpt back together. So I think that'll be all right. And it's at this point in our creative journey that the magic really does happen in the details. So just keep on, I don't know, there is a chance, I suppose, in overworking a piece, but I don't feel like you have to be like, well, I put on 20 things. It should be done now. It's like, keep doing it till it's done. There we go. Like little empty spots like that. It needs something. Just fleshing out the details. Oops. There we are. No, we totally could though. Let's see what this would look like if we, if we have some softer fluffiness. I have some purple fluffy moss. Yes! Okay. How do I open this? Crap. I don't know how to open it. Here's a razor blade. That'll work. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's so purple. I love it. Okay, so... I like this stuff because you can shake off the excess. It's like, what is this? Reindeer moss, I think, maybe? But we can take... Oh, I love that. Okay. And then I'm just going to stab little bits of it into our epoxy sculpt. To varying degrees of success. We may end up actually just hot gluing that in after everything's dry. But I really, really love it. <laughs> like, so much. So I'm just going to take this, and you can just tear it in half. You can shake it a bit, and a little bit of crumbs and stuff will come out. But for the most part, you don't have to worry about this reindeer mo moss uh, shedding on you the way that the slag spag sphagnum, sphagnum moss, this stuff, sphagnum, S-P-H-A-G-N-U-M, maybe, is, or I don't know, is that even what this is? Sphagnum. Help me, internet. How do you pronounce that? It's the following day, and everything is looking pretty cool. I'm very, very pleased with it. <clears throat> and if you'd like to see it glowing, be sure to check out our TikTok, though... I don't know. I may be able to get some footage of it glowing and like stuff for the end of this video. I'm on a little bit of a time crunch. Things took a longer to dry, um, just cumulatively. So this, at the time of recording, I need to get this tutorial out like tomorrow and I have not even begun editing and it's, I should have been done by now. So anyways, I am mixing up this matte Alt Mod Podge Ultra and I am just going to spritz it into and onto and you can see it's okay if you get it on the wood I'm trying to avoid getting it on the stone but it's not a huge deal and we can just come through and do a couple of layers on here like that and I'm just letting it settle actually so if you can see how as it runs down, it's actually settling into and helping to adhere to the uh, moss down here as well. And I do have just a glass marble in the bottle that I can use to get some shaky 
stirring going on. But yeah, and I'm just going to let that rest up. <clears throat> we can actually come through and kind of matte spray onto those as well. Just kind of rubbing it into the wood. I'm just sealing. It'll make it easier to dust. It'll keep things gripping onto each other pretty well. And I'm going to do the same style once this is kind of all dry. Um, of moss and everything on this side is what I did Oops, on this one. And I want to make sure we don't get any weird little thick runny bits. So... We can kind of go through and make sure that it's not getting weird on us. But yeah, just going to go through use the using the same super thick kind of up and around like how we did underneath. And I'm basically going to try to mirror image both sides. But I think y'all might have gotten the idea by now of how that goes about. So I am going to be doing that um, off camera just for expediency's sake. So I've gone ahead and did something a little bit differently on this side. So I went through and applied a little bit of a spray layer to try to, you know, saturate through everything um, right from the get-go. So I'm going to let this dry with a fan on it for a little while, at least to get it set up enough that I can then show you guys the full piece. I'm really pleased with how with how this came out I'm gonna say okay guys this is how she came out now we still have some stuff drying here on the side but I think you get the general idea of how things are coming out if future Vaughn remembers to I'll have some super cool slow motion stuff layered on over this but um <laughs> like i'm just i'm super duper stoked with how it came out i absolutely love the sheen of the resin on the fronts of the drawers next time i do think i'm going to seal the wood either before or after painting um quite potentially before painting actually um seal it with some mod podge that way we don't have the trouble with the bubbles rising through the way that we did before um, I absolutely love all the little succulents, all the broken calves given second life through the polymer clay. It's just, it's perfect. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, I love the secret garden, like the secret mandalas in the back. Just so nice. Um, really cool experiment too with the using of resin and stuff. And then I am so excited to bonk have my secret hidden compartment there on the bottom oh so let me know what you guys think thank you so much for hanging out with me while making this I know it was not it, this was no five minute crafts project I tell you what um but I really appreciate um you know y'all's support and just hanging out and you know keeping it crafty with me and uh uh, all the links for everything are down in the video description, whether you're looking for a material list or ways to support the channel, or if you're interested in purchasing pieces like this off of our website, all of those links are down in the video description. So until next time, y'all, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> Hey guys, you'd be so proud of me. This is actually Future Past Vaughn, and I am almost done at this time in existence. I'm almost done 
editing this video and Randy was like, are you not going to show it with the tea light? And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Like I said earlier, tea light time. So this is how it's looking with just like a lamp on. And then this is how it looks with a tea light in it. Like these are just glow in the dark mushrooms. But yo, like that's, that's pretty cool. I do think. And then this is what it looks like. Watch your eyes. Lumos. With a string of fairy lights that's attached to batteries. And so I'm just gonna let's pop this out real quick. Sorry for that horrible noise. So that's the amethyst. Those are the smoky quartz. The little succulents of the light shining through. And then I'm gonna switch this off. And this is one of those like twinkling tea lights and that way we still get to have our succulent there on top and this is how it looks again so thank you guys so much for watching again this is this is the end for real though except for there's also going to be some more slow motion after this <laughs> so the bonuses at the end of the video bye guys happy crafting Mwah. <laughs>